Hi, this is Anthony Lawson, pastor of the Jump Around Church, and this is our midweek message, our midweek Bible study. Today is Thursday, and it is July the 9th. Hope you're doing well, and hope you're ready for a word from the Lord. Uh, if you have your Bible, look with me at Hebrews chapter 13. I want to be very brief in this message. Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews chapter 13. I want us to think on two words today, just two words. The two words are presence and prayer. Presence and prayer. Just want to think about two words. We're going to look at uh, two promises from the word of God to those of us who are God's children that will give us hope, stability, and strength in uh, this hour that we're going through. Listen to this, uh, Hebrews 13 and 5. Hebrews 13 and 5. Let your conversation be without covetedness and be content with such things as you have. For he have said, here's the promise, I shall never leave thee nor forsake thee so that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear what man shall do unto me. I want to talk about two words, presence and prayer. Now, we're in this uh, probably one of the worst times that's ever been in human history as far as those of us in this generation are concerned, this pandemic. And there are a lot of people who are socially isolated, uh, a lot of children who are socially isolated, uh, a lot of young adults socially isolated. It means, by that I mean that they are seemingly alone. Uh, they are not where they can be with people as they have been used to being with people. Can't move about, have to be socially distant from people. And this may not apply to you, but just hear what I'm saying. There are a lot of people who right now feel very alone. Uh, this is especially true for a lot of people who are, are single. By single, I mean unmarried. Uh, you know, it's pretty good when you have a spouse in the house during this time when we have to uh, stay at home as much as possible. Some people don't have spouses. A lot of people are single. Uh, and even some people who are married, even though they're in the house with someone, they still feel a great deal of loneliness. Loneliness is something that a lot of people are going through during this time that we are in right now, these perilous times. A lot of people are really lonely. They feel like they don't have anybody. So what we have in the text today is a promise of God's presence, a promise of God's presence. So what we've got to learn how to do is we've got to learn how to practice the presence of God. Your body, now that you are saved, is actually the temple of God. The Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God is in you. So no matter where you go, God is in you. Now he's around everybody because God is everywhere. But you have the privilege of being the temple of God of the Holy Spirit. God is in the believer. He resides in your heart, or another way of saying it is he resides in your spirit, man. The Spirit of God is in you. And so therefore, we have a promise as being children of God. We have the promise that no matter what's going on around us, the Lord has promised that he would never leave us and never forsake us. So we've got to learn how to actually practice the presence of God. Now, God is a spirit, so you can't sit on your couch and say that God is sitting beside you. Uh, it's really better than God sitting beside you. God is actually in you. And so we've got to get to the point where we acknowledge all of the good things that's in us. And God's not a thing, but the Holy Spirit of God is in us. And we've got to learn how to bring that to our mind when we start fighting feelings of loneliness, fighting feelings of despair. The great I am is in you. So we are thinking on the first word, presence. Now, you've got to meditate on this. And then there are times when you're going to have to actually talk to yourself. 
And you're going to have to remind yourself, God is in me. He is very present with me, in me. And the scripture says he is even a very present help in trouble. This word says that God says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Now, here's something we got to learn how to do, saints. We got to learn how to really come to the place where we depend on the word of God. I'm going to tell you something. In this world, you don't have, you don't really have anything but God's word. But that's enough if you will acknowledge it as being God's word, receive it as being God's word, and believe it as being, as being God's word. Because God cannot lie. One of the greatest promises we have is that God promises to be ever present with the believer. I don't care where you are. You can be uh, going through a severe health test. God is with you. You can be going through a family test. God is with you. You can be battling times of despair and loneliness, again, which a whole lot of people are battling as we are in this pandemic. We're in this, this virus, this corona catastrophe that we're going through. So God is with you. God is in you. He says, I will never leave you. Now, the devil will always try to make you concentrate on something that you seemingly don't have. So a whole lot of times during this time of, 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 of people being, as they call it, social, socially distant and social isolation, God, will, you know, the devil will come up and say, you don't have anybody. There's nobody, nobody with you. Even those who are in the house with you aren't really with you. They're just in the house. And this is the time when you're going to have to really learn how to depend on the word of God because the word is all you have. And again, God can't lie. So he is with you. So don't let yourself get over into covetedness, uh, getting your mind on what you wish you had. Thank God for what you do have. And, 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 and who you have above everything else is God. And you got to keep that in your mind. God is present with me. God is in me. Let me read this to you from the Amplified Bible. It says, let your, let your character and moral disposition be free from love of money, including greed, avarice, lust, and craving for earthly possessions. <clears throat> it's amazing how much we're hearing people talking about earthly possessions during this time of pandemic uh, or getting more earthly possessions when earthly possessions really, they really can't really help you now. But, but if you're not sharp, your flesh will get over into lust for things and you'll miss who you have. All right, let me read on. Uh, lust and craving for earthly possessions and be satisfied with your present circumstance and with what you have. Listen to this. For he, God himself, has said, I will not in any way fail you, nor give you up, nor leave you without support. And then the Amplified Bible says, I will not, I will not, I will not in any degree leave you helpless, nor forsake, nor let you down, relax my hold upon you, assuredly not. So verse 6 says from the Amplified Bible, so we take comfort and are encouraged and confidently and boldly say, the Lord is my helper. That's a good place for you to say that right now with me. <clears throat> say the Lord is my helper. Say it. The Lord is my helper. <clears throat> I will not be seized with alarm. I will not fear or dread or be terrified. What can man do to me? So, First word we want to concentrate on is presence. God's presence is with you wherever you go. God is in you. So begin to practice the presence of God. The Bible makes a statement talking about me and I to always pray and not faint. And prayer is really a conversation. So all day long, have a conversation with God. Pray all day, you know. Talk to God. If you're home alone, talk to God. And I guarantee you, if you get quiet and learn the voice of God, the still, small voice of God, God will talk back to you. Second word, I'm going to be brief. Second word is prayer. 
All right. Not only is God with you, but you have the privilege of prayer. And listen to this. And knowing beyond the shadow of a doubt that God hears you and also knowing beyond the shadow of a doubt that God is answering your prayers. And that is that is a that is really blessed assurance to know God hears me and God is answering my prayers. All right, here's the scripture, 1 John chapter 5. 1 John chapter 5. These are familiar, and it's, it's good for me to remind you of some things that you've heard. You need to hear them again and again so you can come to the place of not just saying, I heard it, but I know it. I'm acting upon it, and the promise is being manifested in my life. 1 John chapter 5. 1 John chapter 5. Look with me. Now listen to this. And let's, let's believe the word. Now let's just, it's not just the good old book. This is the word of God to you and to me. It's personal. So we have presence and then we have prayer. Two P's for the day. The second one is, is prayer. 1 John 5 and 14. And this is the confidence that we have in him. If we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he hear us whatsoever we ask, we know we have the petitions that we desired of him. This is such a promise that it's just, it's, it's a God promise which makes it awesome. God gives here where you can have confidence in knowing that your prayer will be answered. Listen to what it says now. The, the, the scripture says, Number one, if we ask anything according to his will. So as you're praying, you want to make sure you know that I'm praying according to the will of God. I'm praying according to the will of God. If we ask anything according to his will, we have a promise. He hears us. Uh, how many times have you ever prayed and it seemed like you didn't think you were getting through? It seemed like your prayers didn't even get out the room. It seemed like the ceiling, your prayer stopped at the ceiling. This Bible says, if you ask, if you're asking God according to his will, listen, if he hears you, child of God, don't take prayer lightly. God hears you. Did you hear what I said? God hears you. It says, it says, if we ask anything according to his will. So number one, I got I to be asking according to the will of God, according to the word of God. Scripture says, if you abide in me and my word abide in you, then you shall ask what you will and it shall be done. So you've come to the place where your will matches his will because you have the word abiding in you. So you're asking according to the will of God. And the promise is, if you ask according to the will of God, God hears you. And then it gets better. Verse 15 says, and if we know that he hear us, whatsoever we ask, we know we have the petitions that's desired of him. Listen to this child of God. Even in the midst of this pandemic, you have the promise of his presence. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. And then you have the precious and powerful privilege of prayer. And that is, if you can ask anything according to God's will, and if you do that, he will hear you. And if he hears you, then there's something that you know. You know, because you've asked according to his will, because you know he heard you, you know you have the petitions, even the long list of things that we desire to him. Now, I'm telling you, if you, if you hear that and believe it, You'll be confident, even in this hour, hour of testing and trial that's come upon this world. You'll have, and that's what God wants you to have. He wants you to have confidence, bold confidence. You have his presence and you have the powerful privilege of prayer, talking to God all day long, anytime, anywhere, talking to God. And understand something, you can talk, you can, the Bible says you can commune with God in your heart. So sometimes with, without even moving your lips in your heart, you can be praying. See, 
And if you're praying according to the will of God, so what? Well, somebody said, well, Pastor Lawson, I've been praying and, and uh, I haven't received. I mean, I haven't received what I've been praying for. Understand that your praying has to be according to the will of God for you. You know, so many times people look at other people's lives and they compare. Let me tell you something. Comparison is always the breeding ground of discontentment. Stop comparing with other people because a lot of times what may be the will of God for somebody at a particular time may not be the will of God for you. I used, for example, a whole lot of, of ladies who pray for spouses, significant other spouses, and then they see somebody else get a spouse, and you need to understand, so you begin to petition God, but you don't get yours as fast as they got theirs. Guess what? It may not be the time. See, God has a specific will for your life. But understand this, whatever God does in principle for one, he must do in principle for another. It may not be the same thing, but if it, but he must do in principle. As long as you are asking according to his principles, his word, God will do for you. And what God will do is he'll give you what's custom designed for you. There's a song they should sing on the radio that said, what God has for me is for me. So God will give you what you need. And a lot of times when we are praying and not receiving in what we think is a timely fashion, the scripture says when we pray and receive not many times, it's because we ask amiss because there's something we want to consume upon our own lust. God the Father knows what's best. God the Father knows when it's best. Our job is to make sure I'm praying according to the will of God. If I'm praying according to the will of God, he hears me. And if, and if he hears you, you have it. And verse 15 says, if we know that he hears us whatsoever we ask. That's why the Bible says, if, if you abide in me, my word abide in you, then you can ask what you will. You can ask what you will. But see, the, the abiding word, that's why I told you a few minutes ago, it's important that you know the word and believe it. And act like it is what it is. It is the word of the living God that he has given unto you. Let me read this text to you from the Amplified Bible, and this will be our study for this midweek. 1 John 5 and 14, Amplified Version says, Amplified Bible, and this is the confidence, the assurance, the privilege of boldness which we have in him. We are sure that if we ask anything, make any request, according to his will, in agreement with his own plan. He listens to and hears us. And if since we positively know that he listens to us in whatever we ask, we also know with settled and absolute knowledge that we have granted as our present possession the request made of him. That's why the Bible says that you have to believe when you pray. You have to believe you have received when you pray. And you can do that if you pray according to the will of God. My brothers and my sisters, don't be lonely. When you feel loneliness, meditate on the fact and the truth that God will never leave you nor forsake you. Then if there's something that you need, use your throne room privileges. Come boldly to the throne of grace that you may obtain mercy and find grace to help in any time of need. He is a very present help in trouble. Practice his presence all day long. Talk to yourself and say, God is with me. And make your request made known unto God. One scripture says, be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known unto God and the peace of God that passes all understanding will keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. You have his presence and you have the privilege of prayer. Let's pray now. Father, in Jesus' name, I ask you now to bless those who have heard this word I pray, Holy Spirit, you would take this word 
and take it from information and make it revelation that we may live lives of manifestation that we can have everything you want us to have. And most of all, God, I pray that those who are listening will be granted your peace even in the midst of this time of upheaval and this time of storm. I pray now in the precious name and I, we believe we receive right now when we pray in Jesus' name. And Father, I pray your protection over everyone here in this word that many of us, Father, have to go out into this world. I pray when we go out that you would insulate us from any infection. I ask you to do that supernaturally. It's your will that we prosper and be in health even as our soul prospers. Surely Jesus bore our griefs. So we speak for those who are listening and we say of you, Lord, you are a refuge, you are a fortress, you are our God. And surely you deliver us from the snare of the fowl and the noisome pestilence. Thank you for covering us with your feathers. We thank you now for your presence and we thank you for our throne room privilege. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. That's the midweek message for this week. Pray it bless you. It bless me. And we pray that you will be assured of the presence of God and assured of the power you have in prayer. In Jesus' name, talk to you at the next midweek message. God bless.